One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. Link is in the description. Um, all right. Welcome to another uh, weekend mentoring. Um, I guess this is going to be for today. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So this is kind of, again, just the, the actual chart for the, for the context. Um, LHDX kind of had this like bit of a pre-market run, sold off, rallied, and then came back down. This is the actual just TOS chart for everyone who's kind of wondering. And this is kind of how this member traded it. Um, so again, I don't, I don't really hate these trades. I just, for me on the short side, I don't see a ton of, of meat on them. Um, and I guess he just went short after the stuff, which is, this is acceptable. I mean, going short after the stuff move, that's okay. Um, we come back again, test view app, go lower. Now this is where we start getting into the territory of like, okay, like how much meat is really on the bone here? And also like we're getting into like the third and fourth tests of this kind of view app area. After we test like three or four times, I mean, we're gonna break eventually, right? At, at some point, the odds are gonna kind of go lower and we're going to eventually break higher. And so I love these trades where it's like, okay, I'm gonna short the first pop after the stuff move and then I'm gonna cover lower, I like that. We're gonna short the first test of VWAP and then cover lower, I like that. I, I, you know, I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, I don't even really see anything wrong with shorting kind of in this area after we see this big stuff move as well. Um, but again, it's kind of like this first pop, this first test of VWAP. But when we get to the second and the third test, that's when the kind of edge starts diminishing kind of over and over and over again. And I mean, for me, I just, I just personally kind of, in my opinion, I think as we get the more times this kind of area and this kind of line is tested, then kind of we have those odds to break higher. Um, he took the short up here. I don't necessarily hate it. I just think it's one that you need to be super cautious on because if we do break higher, you need, need, need to be ready to stop out over highs. In this kind of scenario, I think we just squeezed a lot of shorts and then they just dropped it way lower and that was kind of the rest of the trade. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I don't hate it up here. Like if you're just taking some small up here, I mean, you know, I, I don't hate that kind of trade in that kind of situation. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of my thoughts on this one. Anyone else? I've been talking to, um, like a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to Amin because we have seen in small caps, this same pattern over and over again, that it goes in between, it, it goes, it goes to zombie between 10. 10, 15 to 11 a.m. It's zombie, and then it does a, like a double top, and then it fails. Like yeah. it has been trapping a lot of people, but now that if you if you look at other small cap, um, you're gonna see the same pattern over and over and over again. So it's the same thing. 10:30, you uh, verify that line that that did in pre-market, and once it hit, you can uh, you, you you could have um. You, you, you could do the same thing over again with a stop loss above 750, I would have assumed because 730 is still, I don't know how, how, how you guys play it because I, I'm starting to short now because if long swing is not trading, I'm going to, I'm going to join the dark side soon, you know. <laughs> um, we also have Tosh here. So welcome. Yeah. To Tosh. He has to unmute him so we can hear him. What's up, dudes? Hey. First thing, I want to talk about something today, but I'll review this chart real quick. Uh, whose chart is this? All right, so here's what's happening. This is short, right? I hate these TZ charts, but all right, so here's the thing. You know what this is actually for charting. I don't, what is this? I don't even know what platform this is. For I have no idea what this is, but here's the thing. Outer lines are death candles, right? Outer lines are death candles. I don't like the shorts of VWAP. It's just, it's very much chasing. You're chasing after what appears to be a death candle, but again, when it's this early in the day, just be careful, man. Just be careful. So you want to wait for outer lines. The 7 to the 7.30 area is the first short. If you don't like that and you want to wait for the stuff move, wait for the death candle right after. Then you can hit pops securely. 
that's the safest. I mean, you guys shorting a VWAT, it's very dangerous. So again, there's there's ways to get squeezed and there's ways not to, you know? So I like outer lines or death candles. It's as simple as that. It's always going to be the safest, big stuff moves, things like that. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. I think like shorting something like the first VWAP test, like that's okay. But when we're getting into like the third and the fourth and the whatever, it's like at some point this isn't going to work, you know? Well, the, the and I'm with you on that, Harry. Usually the only reason why I don't like this one is because by the time we really get to open, I mean, it's not crazy under VWAP. It's just, it's not one of those ones where Joe and I talk about where it's so bloody under VWAP it's like the ocean floor, right? So when it comes back to the surface, dude, there's no chance. It's a sunken ship. This is just kind of one that's been really kind of close to view off all more, and I don't like those. Yeah, true. Sure. Sure. Uh, another thing that I just noticed uh, that some uh, member put it, uh, trade for a living, uh, instead of going 30% of his size over VWAP, he like he did it all the other way, the other way around. Like you should be trading under 30% of your original size if you're shorting over BWAP because you're you're playing with fire. Once it gets under BWAP, then you play with, with your size. You know, that that's what, what the MIC teaches. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, Tosh, uh, Harry. No, you're spot on. spot on. All right, Austin, you want to add anything or on to the next? Uh, not much. I just, uh, what, the one thing I don't like about it um, is the fact that like under VWAP, you could see the, the, the slow ad, slow ad, slow ad, but yet fearless when it was really scary, which, you know, like when it's up there, I don't mind the shorts up there at 720, like you have a nice line there, but it's, yeah. it's as if you, you were, you know, like this is like Klaus said, right? You should, you should kind of be fearless when you've got that under VWAP safety and then, you know, Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line, and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. And then just cut it if you need to, but like, I mean... You, like it's it's like wow I lost the first time now I'm gonna go twice as big on the second trade kind of looks like that a little bit yeah also um, the first trade is the one where he sized only a hundred shares yeah that's when you need to be going big yeah that's <laughs> what on the first VWAP yeah that first VWAP push up there there's no shorts there but anyway that's just it, it looks like the cut happened so yeah. um, and the retry so I mean it's okay yeah hundred percent. Uh, All right, so before we go to the next chart, let me let me say something real quick. The reason why I jumped in today is I actually don't have time to do this is I want to talk about ego and I want to talk about why it's holding you back in your trading in your life. So the first thing about becoming a trader or anybody as a person is you have to understand that when you're the problem in something, you're the fucking problem. And when the majority vote says that you are the problem, you're going to be. And a lot of people don't understand this. This is why they do so terrible in their trading. So you can look at all areas of your life. You can see how it adds up. But when we get back to trading, guys, you have to understand the worst thing that you're ever going to fumble in is ego. Thinking small is ego. Thinking you need to have all the attention, have all the recognition. I need to post it. Do you know I don't post charts or anything on Twitter anymore? I did for seven years straight. I got so much clout. I don't even know how I raised to 9,000 members before MIC. I could give a fuck, dude. It's ego. I got to a point one day right before MIC. I said, wow. All these people praise my back and I'm, a, I'm an attention whore. I'm literally an attention whore. I need everybody to see me. I need everybody to hear me. And guess what? It really affected my trading. And I felt like I had become somebody else and I felt like I had to do this. And this weight upon me was like, I had to look in the mirror one day and be like, nobody gives a shit about you, dude. That's the whole point. And then I traded way better. So within this, for the people that aren't able to take losses, that's ego. For the people that aren't able to sustain their revenge trading, that's ego. If you're an attention whore, that's ego. And this is why people don't like you. This is why people don't want this. This is why you lose money. Everything boils back down to ego. There's no biases. There's nothing else beyond that. I want you guys to understand you get in your own way because you have to be seen and you have to throw it from the rooftops that you need to be seen. You, you can't cut a loss because you're gonna be seen doing a loser. Any type of ego is going to floor you guys in your trading. And I had a couple of members recently just reach out to me recently and, you know, really want me to go over ego and, and how to sustain it and how to go back to it. And look, man, in MIC, I am a democratic 
island in MIC. I'm Switzerland. I don't care if you're long, short, biased in any form of price action. I want to see you guys do good. And I see so much ego floating around there by many members. And I'm here to curb it as much as I can, man. You are getting in your own way because you need attention and you have an ego problem. If you don't have those, dude, your trading is going to skyrocket. I get really passionate about this subject because I hate people with ego so much I can't stand it because I used to be one of those people and I had to have the nuts kicked out of me to get it out of my system. So it's a little bit of a rant today, but I want you guys to know that think big, get out of your own way, stop blaming other people, stop blaming charts. You're the reason you're getting in your own way. If there's any hurdle, if there's any speed bump in the parking lot where you're trying to rev your Hellcat, guess what, dude? Go to a track and get out where there's speed bumps. You know what I mean? You're getting in your own way. So hopefully that helps somebody. Hopefully somebody needed to hear it, but that's how I feel about that. Uh, we can book in that and uh, let's get back to charts for a second because I got about 10 more minutes. All right. I mean, I love that because like also I used to be one of those people on Twitter as well. And then slowly I just kind of have the same conversation with myself. Like no one fucking cares, dude. dude nobody gives a rat's ass about your existence. That's and literally I literally fucking years ago. Me. So yeah. No. <laughs> you know how much people are worried about their own lives to care about you? Yes, it, it, me, it, Alex, anybody, dude, worry about your own life, man. Thanks. 100%. Um, this is the full chart on BNTC. I always post them for context. Obviously, we didn't have like that that much going on after hours. We had this kind of spike up here, but pretty illiquid, not much volume. And then we kind of spiked and then dropped. Um, this this member just kind of took a short into, I guess, I like guess, very tiny pop um, after we kind of pulled back here. Um, I would have rather uh, like this this member taking this trade like here because he didn't cover like this was his short and this was his cover right at break even. And what I think he should have done is just waited for a pop in towards view app, shorted that pop in towards view app and then covered the weakness instead of shorting a tiny pop where he doesn't have that much conviction and then ends up stopping out at break even. It's just better off to short a pop. Like instead of just shorting the weakness out of FOMO after you see a red candle, it's better to short a pop. Like, if, if the stock's trading right here, you're wanting a bit over view app, you know, right here in this kind of area, you want to see a pop and then a, a drop lower. You don't, you don't just want to short immediately because you see a red candle. That's like longing after you see a green candle, you know? So you might as well just wait for that pop to view app and then cover, cover, cover down here. That's my thoughts on this one. Harry, can you zoom out of this one back to the main focus? Was that the, yeah, thank you, buddy. Um, so number one, guys, we always talk about this. Uh, something that is a liquid pre-market like this, like tick, 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 and then there's spaces between, this will go to outer lines because someone's going to pump this. It'll get squeezed. You cannot short anything outside of the ultimate top outer lines. Or again, like the other chart that we were talking to you uh, talking about, you have to wait for a major top or a death candle. Within something like this, expect this to get fucker reaction because they're going to pump this, dude. They can because it's a liquid. If a pumper can pump something, he will pump something. If he cannot pump something, he may or may not due to the fact that, you know, there's nothing running that day. If it's a slower day, I don't remember how many runners this were, was on this specific day, but say this was the only runner in a liquid, you're going to get, this would have broken pre-market highs or, or after hours highs or new high. So you guys got to be careful about the liquid nature because it's like what I say about range. If something has range, it'll use it. If a pumper can pump, he'll pump it. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah, I completely agree. And in just this kind of like, now that we're looking at this kind of chart, like he ended up taking a short right here and then it went all the way lower. And then he ended up covering up here for break even. But if he had have just waited for this pop towards VWAP, I mean, he would have been in the green for the rest of, for the rest of the entire day, right? So, I mean, you really want to be shorting those pops instead of just shorting right after, you know, a red candle, right? Well, on something like this, I already know where Bao would have been all over this. He would have absolutely been, wait, oh, hold on. Let me move my the Zoom thing was blocking the prices. Um, Bao would have already, I know for 100%, would have been at 560, 580, probably up to $6. 
he would have covered on that wash under VWAP break right there at 541. He would have covered a little bit right there. And then guess what? When it goes down another three candles under VWAP, he already instantly knows this thing is totally put in the top. Guess where Bow is going to be next? Right at that VWAP pop where Harry just talked about. So if you're not modern rock and you're a little bit scared to hit, um, you know, somewhat front side, like he can because he's so freaking good. I don't even attempt that anymore. Bow's just a freaking rock star. Guys, just wait for the top. Wait for this thing to ca caress under VWAP after putting an outer line uh, reject, then go way under VWAP, and then, dude, hit hard on that pop if you want to. It's broken now. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.